to today's Competitive Intelligence Division of the Special Libraries Association webinar on Social Media Insights using Facebook and LinkedIn for competitive research. Uh, I'm Zena Applebaum, your chair of the CI division for this year, and it's uh, my pleasure to first thank our sponsors, Aurora WDC, for hosting our webinars and keeping our professional development education going every month. I want to remind you as well to please register for the conference if you haven't yet. The early bird registration is still open. And of course, the CID networking event, which promises to be as great as it ever has been, um, will be happening at the Chart House at, in Boston. And you can register for that at the same time that you register for the conference. The Open House will also have our award ceremony and look for um, award submission notices coming soon. Finally, uh, before we introduce our speaker, I just wanted to uh, remind you to check the calendar often for all of our other webinars as they happen. This recording, sorry, this presentation will be recorded, um, as will the others as well, and I will give you some information about our next webinar happening on April the 29th at the conclusion of today's webinar. With us today, we are honored to have Rajiv Joel, who's a finance and economics librarian at Concordia University in Montreal. He's responsible for collection development and teaching students how to use business resources such as DataStream, Bloomberg, and SMP Capital and Capital IQ. Rajiv also teaches the business information courses in the School of Information Studies at McGill. His research areas include financial literacy and the use of social media and business research, which is what we will get started with um, right now. So Rajiv, I hand it over to you. Great. Thank you very much, Sina. Um, Welcome everybody and thanks for being here today. Uh, what we'll be doing specifically is we're going to be looking at Facebook and LinkedIn and how we can use those two social media platforms for competitive research. So the topics I wanted to cover today, first off I wanted to talk a little bit about what social business is and its relation to social media. From there I'm going to talk a little bit about competitive intelligence using LinkedIn as well as Facebook. And finally, we're going to talk a little bit about real-time search engines and using monitoring tools for advanced metrics. So we're going to be looking at paid sites. We're also going to be looking at some free resources that you can actually follow up and see what the sentiment is um, for a particular platform, for a particular brand, for a particular keyword search that you're doing. Okay, so a presentation in itself should take about 45 minutes and of course there's going to be time for questions and I encourage you if you have any questions I'll be happy to answer them towards the end of the presentation. Alright, so just to start off, um, when we're talking about social media I like to put it into the context of what it is and it's really a part of social business. Uh, this is a uh, basically a definition from Gerald Kane who wrote, uh, who's been writing a lot about um, um, social media and social business for MIT Sloan Management Review where they do a study every year to see how companies are integrating social business as part of their um, operations I would say. So you have some, you have a definition of what social business is all about but basically it's, a, it's three components. It's made up of social media, and social media is what we're going to be focusing on because it's free for all to sign up and use and this is where we can use most of the information that we can gather for free and it's of course public information so it is we're not we don't have to worry too much about the law. Um, there's also other categories like social software which is really um, limited to the inside of the corporation and is based on communication and collaboration between employees. So examples of this could be uh, SharePoint, Yammer, Jive, account are three that I'm aware of that are really towards the enterprise. And finally, there's a, the, the other component is made up of um, something called social networks. And this could be internal, usually internal to the uh, organization. Again, an example of this could be a private network like Ning, where you can set up your own social network. And of course, something that's coming up uh, called Facebook at Work. And if you haven't heard about it, Facebook at Work is basically a second Facebook account that can only be used by coworkers at a particular firm. And it's basically separate from uh, their personal Facebook account. So it's something that's in the work. It's something that's going to be rolling out by Facebook this year. So that falls within the realm of social network. And unfortunately, the last two components are not openly available. So we, what we have to do is when we're looking for competitive intelligence information, we really look at social media, in this case, Facebook and LinkedIn, to get information about companies and see what we can mine from there. Okay, so how do companies use social media? Now, 
I think most of us will agree that social media is fantastic when it comes to marketing, especially to B2C clients. So marketing is really involves promotional activities, ad campaigns, sponsorship events, and raising awareness for a brand or a product. I would also like to argue that social media can be used beyond marketing. And these are the other areas that I hope to demonstrate today that you can use social media for in competitive intelligence. So businesses can also use, they're also using social media for innovation and idea sourcing, and I'll show you examples of that. And they're using it for operations, in other words, uh, impacting how the company runs its day-to-day -day business, recruitment and selection, such as hiring employees, identifying top prospects, and last but not least, fundraising, which includes collecting donations, making a call for volunteers, and so on. All these sources of information can be mined from Facebook and LinkedIn as both small and large companies use these two platforms. So if I just go to the data very quickly, you'll notice that amongst micro businesses, Facebook is very popular, but LinkedIn is not too far behind. And these are the two platforms where you will see a lot of businesses just being involved. So that's the reason why I'm focusing on Facebook and LinkedIn. So this is, again, micro-businesses with fewer than five employees, and they're using Facebook and LinkedIn heavily. If we go to Fortune 500 companies, you'll notice, again, LinkedIn is number one, with 97% of Fortune 500 companies reporting to have a company page. If we look at Facebook, the, uh, it's only 80% that have a fan page on uh, Facebook. So, again, LinkedIn and Facebook, you'll find a lot of company information there. Um, Twitter is also very popular. Unfortunately, we just don't have time to cover Twitter. It's almost another session in itself, but what we'll be doing is we'll lo be looking specifically at LinkedIn and Facebook for those two reasons, because companies are actually there, and let's see what kind of information we can mine from those sites. All right, so just a little bit about LinkedIn. If you haven't used it before, it is a professional network of 300 million users. This was, as, of course, as of last year, so there's probably a little bit more than that right now. It is international in scope. It is not limited to any geographic region. It has its interface in 23 languages, so that's fantastic. If you want to have an interface in another language, you can do so. You can also create profiles in other languages, like French and in Spanish. And LinkedIn also has the following features. So basically, when you first log in to, to LinkedIn, when you create an account, you'll be asked to create a personal profile. And this is like a CV where you write down all the things that you, you, you have done. So basically, your experience, your, your skills, um, anything that will help you get noticed. And a lot of people take full advantage of putting their CV on their personal profile. So a lot of information about where they worked and what kind of educational attainment that they have, things like that are available there. Uh, from there, you can also take part in interest groups. You can also peruse through job postings, company pages, and something new that they've included is showcase pages, which is our affiliation pages to the company page. And something else that I find very interesting because I work in an academic setting is university pages. So you get to see where your alumni are working. And again, I'll give you examples of that a little bit later on. Okay. So in terms of competitive intelligence, how can we use LinkedIn? Well, there's a lot of information on LinkedIn. So what I decided to do was focus on two different ways. The first one is to focus on gathering information about people. And the reason we can do this is because we have access to management and employee profiles. And this includes executives from various types of institutions. So we have public companies, we have private firms, we also have nonprofits, government agencies, education. Uh, basically, uh, LinkedIn is open to everybody. We also get information about their CV listing, their experiences and their education, their responsibilities, future educational aspirations, um, and also the skills that they possess, groups that they belong to, and a list of references that they may have accumulated over their lifetime. All right? So we can also use LinkedIn to find experts on a topic or an industry, and you can do this by looking for people using their advanced people search. And the nice thing about the, uh, the LinkedIn advanced people search is that you can use various limit filters such as past companies. So if you want to reach out, let's say, to somebody who used to work at Coca-Cola to talk to them, you can actually go into the advanced search, put in the name Coca-Cola under past company, and you'll get a list of all the people who have worked at Coca-Cola in the past, and you can send them an email, or if you're connected to them via a colleague or another connection, you can reach out to them and talk to them specifically. Now, the other way you can also find experts within um, a topic or an industry is you can also participate in a group. 
And in a group, you can see it's basically demonstrated knowledge. You get to see the people who are talking. You get a chance to see how people respond to certain um, s certain people's um, queries. Basically, expert on a, expertise on a subject could also be determined based on activity within a group. And I find group participation is a great way to find out who to talk to. So in my case, I always take part in something like, for example, a CLA's group. And I'll ask a question at the Canadian Library Association. I'll ask a question, and I'll automatically know that this is a person I can talk to in the future about finance or where to find data sets. So again, group participation is a great way to expand your knowledge base and also to, uh, to reach out to experts in a particular area. Right, so that was the first part looked at people, and now what we're going to do is see what kind of competitive intelligence information we can gather by, on companies and on nonprofits. So the first part I have labeled here is basically strategy. And what I mean here is that LinkedIn may also reveal insight into a company's strategy based on the current employees. So based on their profiles, message shares, or group activity which discusses the company itself. We can also gather strategy information from the types of jobs being posted, in other words, you get a chance to see where the positions will be located, where they're planning to expand to, are they looking at another country, another area, are they just are they contracting? This is the type of information we can also get from LinkedIn. We can also find information about the company's recent uh, updates. So what are they doing? What kind of blogs are they posting up and how are people reacting to it? So again, that type of information uh, is available and I'll show you examples of that as we move on. Now, in terms of company description, we also get a little bit of information here for such as corporate address, company, and showcase pages as well. So, I think for public companies, it's not a big issue because that type of information is readily available. Whereas we go through the SEC or use a directory, we can usually find information about public companies. But for private companies, that's a little bit hard to come by, and this is where LinkedIn really shines. I find that if you're looking for a private company, you usually get a little bit of synopsis and you can usually find affiliated pages with that company to gather a little bit more information about what they're doing at that particular division or subsidiary. So again, we'll be looking at that a little bit later on as well. Uh, last but not least is something that I'm very excited about is the university pages. So just to give you an idea what university pages is all about, here's an example of one. So this is something relatively new within LinkedIn. It's called LinkedIn for Education. And what it does, it focuses on universities. So anybody who wants it to, uh, has future aspirations, um, wants to reach out, wants to see what's the good school for, for example, in this case, um, software developers, you get what, we, what they call rankings. So this is Concordia University where I work. How does the school rank? Well, you get information about how the school ranks according to other schools. So we're number six when it comes to uh, software developers, number nine for finance professionals, and number 10 for investment bankers compared to other schools in Canada. So what can I do with this page? Well, the nice thing about this page is that it includes data, which would be of interest, I think, to those who work in alumni services. Uh, basically, from the university page, you can filter the categories as we see in blue to see which firms that graduates from your school are working at. What do they do? Where are they located? Their skill set? And this is, of course, great if you want to reach out to that particular uh, person or to that particular organization, especially for fundraising, endowments, and things like that. Univers for universities and alumni services, this is a great way to find out where your students are headed. You can also use this for CAPS, Career and Placement Services, to know where students are working, which firms are hiring. So if you want to reach out to those firms, you can actually have some sort of an internship set up. So again, uh, schools very much affiliated with businesses, usually in the area, and LinkedIn for Education gives you information about the universities and also where students from that university are headed to. Okay, so the next slide over here, you'll notice that this is a company page within LinkedIn. So as all company pages, you have your connections to the company located on the top right-hand side, how you're connected. So I have one second degree connection to Philips Healthcare. The next thing we want to point your attention to specifically is the affiliated company pages. So in this case, Philips is the main company, and it also has a sub-company called Philips Healthcare. So this could be an affiliation, this could be just a subsidiary, but what it is, it's a very targeted page that has a very specific audience from, let's say, Philips Lighting. So the reason why Philips decided to go with LinkedIn was very interesting. Um, the reason that they said, number one, was the objective of being credible and trustworthy as achieved through LinkedIn. 
And according to a study that they pulled, they found people in 77% of the cases trust the information shared on LinkedIn versus 60% on Facebook. Uh, the other reason they had was LinkedIn already had 5 million me medical practitioners on, as, uh, on their site, so their audience is already there in LinkedIn. And LinkedIn provides a real professional context so people talk about professional topics. So in this case, we notice that we have the company pages, we have a specific page on healthcare. We also have other competitors, so other people viewed other companies that have a similar products, so in this case Siemens, Philips, uh, Medtronic. These are all very closely related competitors. And last but not least, we also have featured groups. And this is a place where members or people who follow uh, Philips or any medical practitioner could go in and basically talk to other, talk to their peers, talk to others and find out what's happening specifically. And this is something that Philips is hosting, it's called Innovations in Health. And if we look at this page in a little bit more detail, this is what this interest group looks like. So you have subgroups on the top right hand side, so if you want to look at something specific to radiology, you can do so. You also have oncology, women's health and cardiology. And you can see the way Philips has structured this group, interest group is in the sense that you have polls on the side, on the right hand side, and on the left hand side you also have the discussions that are taking place, so you get a chance to communicate, and you also find out a little bit more about the people behind it by just clicking on their profile. So you get information about what makes this person credible. In other words, it's another way to find out experts and who are talking and uh, gets uh, some information about um, a particular product or a brand. Okay. Oh, uh, last but not least, I also wanted to mention before you join a group, one of the things that you always want to look for is the group statistics. And LinkedIn has statistics for each one of their groups. If you click on the group statistics, what it will do is it will tell you how active a particular group is, it will tell you the demographics, and also tells you the number of discussions that are taking place uh, over the past week. So again, LinkedIn interest groups um, could be a gold mine for, for information. Hey, so I mentioned that you can also use LinkedIn for private company information. So this is an example of one. This is Red Bull. And beyond giving wings to people, I don't know much about this company. So what else are they involved in? Now I notice when I read the description, it mentions that their marketing, sales, and media are really their specialty. It gives me some information about where the company is located. And if I wanted some more information about this company, people also viewed. I get additional affiliations and again I get a little bit more of a description about each one of these affiliations so I can learn a little bit more about Red Bull Media House, Red Bull Records, Red Bull Racing, Red Bull Creative and so on. Just to get a little bit more of an idea of what kind of a company this is, what are their focus areas, how many people actually work for Red Bull compared to Red Bull Records, what is the information, what kind of discussions are taking place on Red Bull Records. as for, as opposed to the main company. So again, private company information, you can find a little bit more of a company description and the discussions that are happening at that level. Okay, so we'll come back to LinkedIn a little bit later on when I give an example of how we can use it for competitive intelligence. I just want to talk a little bit more about Facebook at this point. So LinkedIn, we saw it's being heavily used by companies. We have a lot of B2B, some B2C companies. Companies. Facebook is the largest social network platform in the world, so as of last count it had over 1.3 billion users and there's over 54 million Facebook pages. So I just want to throw a caveat, that doesn't mean that it's just company pages, 54 million company pages, there's also celebrity pages, uh, band pages, it's just that up to 54 million, this also includes company and organization pages and we'll be taking a look at some of that. So Facebook is a fantastic place when we want to find B2C companies. If you're looking for restaurants, you want to find out menus of restaurants, retailers, uh, you often see them on Facebook because it's a very easy way for them to set up and to reach to their end user right away. Okay, so how can we use Facebook for competitive intelligence? Well, for one thing, what we can do is we can get information about a company's products and their services. So what are the product features? Is it a car model, uh, software tutorials that they're releasing? So Autodesk tends to have a lot of their software uh, tutorials on their Facebook page which draws a lot of users to it. Also what kind of uh, act, uh, products are they promoting? Are there new products on the horizon? How do they, how do they you know, spur innovation? We'll be looking at that a little bit later on when we look at Lego. 
We can also gauge consumer sentiment. Uh, how is the company regarded in the eyes of its customers and its fans? What kind of buzz is the company generating? And this is from the discussion that's taking place. We can actually get that type of information right away from Facebook. Also, how does the company respond to posts? Do they respond to posts? What kind of complaints do you get? Is there an opportunity where you can look at the complaints and see if there's something wrong with the manufacturing, see if you can come up with a better product? These are the kind of things that we can mine directly from competitive intelligence using Facebook. And last but not least, marketing activities, events, charities, and causes. What kind of promotions and campaigns is the, is the company engaged in? Uh, what type of events do they sponsor? How popular is the campaign? This is just some of the information we can get. And now what we'll be doing is looking at a few examples of how businesses actually use Facebook. So this is an example of Lego. Lego is a private company, and they had their own company page set up as well, or Facebook page set up for the main company. But I thought it was also interesting that they also had this Facebook page. And this is really a place for them to spur innovation in the sense that they gather ideas from their customers. So they ask people what kind of Lego products do they want to see in the future. People will actually vote on those, and the ones with the highest votes will be taken into consideration to see if there merits a new product to be made based on people's ideas. So if you have an idea, you want to come up with a new LEGO product, you can go to Facebook LEGO, submit your idea, have a picture of it, and depending on how many shares you get, you may actually see your, your idea come to fruition via LEGO. So this is, I thought this was really phenomenal and a very interesting way of engaging with, with, uh, with customers and getting them to be part of the company and building off their ideas as well, making them feel as if they're part of the company. So if we're looking at uh, Facebook, we also notice that this page is quite popular. Okay, it has 63,800 likes, definitely people who follow Lego who are interested in this product. So, again, very interesting page that they have set up. And now this is a page from KLM. So this is KLM's Facebook page, and I call this Operations. Now, in this case, by integrating social media into operations, um, companies can meet customer needs in different and exciting ways, I believe. So as an example here, K KLM is using Facebook to allow customers to request and also to pay for upgrades through its page and receive a boarding pass within minutes. So customers can also use their apps to book a trip. As you can see at the bottom, there's a, and you can also ask them a question. You can expect a response within 32 minutes. There's also something called a trip planner. So uh, KLM will be able to help their clients, their customers, actually come up with a trip that they're, that they're satisfied with and direct them to their uh, website. So in this case, you notice that it goes beyond customer service. What we're really seeing is KLM integrating Facebook within their operations of their company. They're using it for their bottom line, and, and it really has been very successful. Um, I did this slide, I think, at 8.30, and there were already like, you know, 15 different posts to the page, and it looks like it's very, people were very satisfied with KLM when I was looking at the page, very high comments, very high likes, very interesting the way that they have set up their model. So fundraising. For this example, I decided to focus on the Red Cross, and I found that what the Red Cross has done is that they've done a wonderful job of engaging people for fundraising using social media. So in this case, what they've done is they highlight the different causes that they're supporting. So in this case, they have the hashtag give what fire takes. If you want to follow this, you can also see how it's trending in Twitter. So they actually have cross channels going. You notice that they have close to 650,000 likes, and you also have a little bit of a description of where the money is going to, how it's being collected, who's collecting it, and what people have to say about this particular um, cause that they're supporting. So again, a lot of support and a great way to get word out that this is how they're soliciting uh, donations for this great cause. So if you wanted to participate, you can either like this page, you can also give through their page, and you can also set up um, additional information. You can share that with uh, others as well. Okay, so what I want to do next is I want to focus a little bit on what kind of competitive intelligence that we can actually gather using LinkedIn and Facebook. So we've seen a little bit of the sites, and now what I want to do is I want to focus on one particular company and show you what kind of information we can, we can get and how the platforms differ between themselves. Well, what kind of information can we get through LinkedIn as opposed to what we can find through Facebook? 
So the first page I usually go to, in my case, uh, I start off with LinkedIn because I'm a heavy LinkedIn user. And so what I have right away, Coca-Cola Company, is I have my network and I can reach out to my network and I can ask them questions if I want to. I can also have, a, I also have a little bit of information. So again, this is a public company, so you do have a little bit of information about what the company is about. So you have information, you have a list of competitors, people also viewed, and you also have something called recent updates. So if I was looking at the recent updates, I know what's really trending and one of the things that's heavily talked about on the Coca-Cola page is the fact that the company is introducing pay for performance approach to management compensation. So very interesting, it's being proposed and there's a lot of conversations about this going on where people feel that this is a very positive step. So again, this is what the company is doing in this case. So now I just want to move to Facebook and Facebook has a different way of setting up uh, company pages. So once I'm in Facebook I basically have to do a search for Coca-Cola and I could search for Coca-Cola based on different categories. It could be geographically segmented, so in this case I'm looking at Coca-Cola Canada first, but you can also look at by products, so you can look at Coca-Cola products. So if you're interested in a particular product like, like let's say Coca-Cola Life, uh, there's actually a verified page set up within Facebook that's specific to that product. So if I just wanted to track what people are saying about a particular product, I can do that within Facebook. In this case, what I decided to do was look first at Coca-Cola Canada to see how the company is involved within, uh, the, within Canada itself. So in this case, it's supporting uh, it's raising awareness for threats that the face our polar bears are facing. You can see that the last time it was updated was about a month ago, so not very updated in terms of information when we're looking at Coca-Cola Canada. But if I look at other information over here, I can also change the region that I'm looking at. So in this case, I can go to the global page, and if you go to the global page, you actually get a little bit more of a description about the company itself, and you also get within their miles, uh, milestones or their timeline, you get milestones of the company, you get specifically their archival information since the company was founded. So every important step along the way that they highlighted has some sort of memorabilia, has some sort of collective moment, and it's really introduced on the global page. It's not available on the regional pages, and it's not available on the product pages, only on the global page. So if I decided to focus on the United States, I can do that by just clicking on the United States feature, or button, link, and then it'll take me to Coca-Cola United States, and this is the US page. Again, not as much information as a global page when it comes to the company description, but when we actually look at the page itself, you notice that it has over 94 million likes, so this is international. You also have to post to the page specifically on the left-hand side, and you get a chance to see what people have to say about the product or what they're commenting on. If you look at the feeds, you notice it's a little bit more up-to-date. In this case, it was updated within the same day, and this, the reach that they have is amazing. They have over 5,000 likes for this, something that they just posted just 13 hours ago. 103 people have commented on it. So if you're interested specifically about a product or a particular brand campaign, seeing what people have to say, all you have to do is click, click on the comment. You can actually mine for information there. Okay. So that's an example of Coca-Cola's page. And you notice that there are some metrics available. So if I go to the actual 94 million likes, I can actually get a breakdown to see how many people are actually talking about this. So in this case, there's 1.2 million people who are talking about Coca-Cola this week. Uh, 94 million people who have total page likes of this page as we see already, and this includes 8,863 likes from the previous week. So all this information is gathered to you for you on uh, Facebook, and you get a little bit of metrics. Not as much detail as you would like, but you do get some metrics. Um, do people generally like what the company is doing? Do they not? How many page likes do they have? You get that type of information directly from Facebook. So this is a look at Coca-Cola's campaign. So if I was mining for information, I wanted to see what kind of campaigns they're involved in. They're trying to make the internet a better place, so they're really looking at targeting online bullying here and how we can eliminate that. And this has been a very positive campaign. And if you look at the, the likes, you look at the comments, it's been overwhelmingly positive. A lot of good things being uh, said about this particular campaign. 
other previous campaigns we've run in the past have also been very popular. So this was AIDS Regeneration, which is also very popular. They had they sponsored an event to really make AIDS a thing of the past. So again, very much involved in the social fabric, um, promoting the good things that they're involved in. Um, one of the things I noticed yesterday, though, when I was um, practicing with the presentation that there were some negative comments on the Coca-Cola page and those comments were mostly about them lying to health experts and something that Coca-Cola really doesn't address and unfortunately something that you see on their wall is that they don't address uh, a lot of complaints. There's not a lot of interactions to the post. Usually people will post and they won't get an answer from Coca-Cola. So again, uh, something that I noticed when I was just mining through the information on their, on their home page, uh, on their Facebook page for the United States. Right, so moving on, what in summary did, what, did I gather when I looked at Coca-Cola through Facebook and LinkedIn? So in LinkedIn I got the total number of current employees that have a LinkedIn profile, so 50,243. So this includes people who work at, at uh, Coca-Cola and who also have worked at Coca-Cola. So you have a lot of people you can reach out to if you wanted to. Yeah, particular groups that could be of interest to join. So the food and beverage group was very interesting because it was a very active group. It has a lot of members and it also has a lot of discussions that were pertaining specifically to the beverage industry. Um, people also viewed as a very quick way to find out who your competitors are. So when I mined this information, those PepsiCo and Nestle pages were really high up. They also had a lot of people who worked at one industry, one company and then moved on to the other. So it tells me that these two, these three companies have a lot in common. So PepsiCo, Nestle, and Coca-Cola. Company description a little bit more interesting on LinkedIn than it was on Facebook. They also have a lot of international job postings on LinkedIn so you get a chance to find out where the company is actually moving to, where they plan to expand. You'll notice there's a lot of talk about expanding in different countries and you can actually see where in LinkedIn based on the job postings that they have currently up. And the other thing that I find very interesting is the recent page activity. So again I mentioned that they do have compensation transparency. It's a big issue at Coca-Cola and they are addressing it. It's a very popular sentiment. Uh, the other thing I noticed is very interesting is that they also support in hiring veterans for jobs. And I wanted to follow that up. I just wanted to see if that was actually true. And when I actually did a search, I did notice that there were quite a lot of veterans who do work at Coca-Cola or have worked at Coca-Cola. So they are really interested in hiring veterans, and it's great to see that they are promoting and helping them find jobs within Coca-Cola. So Facebook, it tends to focus a little bit more towards marketing. Again, you have 95 million likes. You have um, quite a lot of people who have interacted with the page, 1.2 million in the past week. Um, activity on the wall indicates that Coca-Cola is not very responsive to its customer posts, so it's not very engaged with its clientele. Although people do like the page, there's not a lot of back and forth discussions. They don't address a lot of the issues that people may have or complaints that they have. On the global uh, Facebook page, there's archival information. So if you want to see what was happening, what did go, um, especially like 1989, you want to see what was going on, how. Um, Coca-Cola was responding to the changes. You wanted to see um, 1886 when the company was founded, what kind of documents they had up. You actually have that information available through Facebook. Uh, company description was not very, very helpful. It was very limited in terms of scope, but there is some company description available there. Uh, what I find that uh, you definitely have on Facebook is the promotional videos and sponsored events. So you definitely see Coca-Cola engage in their community and depending on the country they're at, they have different types of content and they have different types of engagement with um, the, the causes that they support in other countries. So again, if you're looking at to see how Coca-Cola positions themselves in other countries, you can actually do that within Facebook. Okay, so key takeaways. And here I just want to summarize what I found within Facebook. Again, Facebook is a great way to get insight into a company's marketing activity and products. So it's fantastic when we're looking for marketing information, but it's also a place where you can also use to find how companies are being innovative and how they're actually engaging with their clientele as well. It helps you to track consumer sentiment. Are the comments usually negative? Are they positive? Do people like a certain product? Do they not? This is the type of information you can gather very easily through Facebook. You also get information about what kind of events do they sponsor, uh, what kind of pr promotional campaigns are they running, ads that they, that they have, and what kind of causes do they support. All that type of information is available through Facebook. 
we have information about the level of community outreach. Uh, specifically with uh, Red Cross, you can see that they have a significant amount of outreach. They engage their grassroots members to be part of the movement, to really feel part of the nonprofit organization. So you get a chance to see a lot of involvement and outreach in that regard. And it also gives you insights into a company's responsiveness. How, um, how likely are they to respond to negative news? So are they like Delta? Or, you know, which is very good usually, or they like United. I still remember the campaign United Breaks Guitars, which um, unfortunately I just can't shake that 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 notion in my head. I always think of them breaking guitars, and um, unfortunately, good news travels fast, but bad news travels even faster. So it's really important to find out what people are saying, and uh, Facebook gives you a way that you can actually get insight into a company responsiveness. A um, couple of things that I found that what, that could be improved within Facebook, I find number one, it's very hard to determine which are official company pages. So when we're looking at company pages within um, Facebook, you usually notice that there's a little check mark right next to the name and that usually indicates that it's verified. But if you're looking at smaller companies, you don't often see a check mark. So it's hard to know if that's an official company, if it's an actual company page, is it a um, fan page. It's really hard to gather that information for companies that are a little bit smaller. The other area that I think that Facebook can improve is the search capabilities. Currently, it's a very basic search capability. So if you're looking for Coca-Cola, you can't do an advanced search and limit just to companies. You have to go through a list and see what else you're, you come up with. So it's, it includes fan pages, it includes company pages, it also includes um, different types of information that's out there. So fake Coca-Cola groups, products, very difficult to find within Facebook. So that's something that they can improve their search box capabilities. So for LinkedIn, it was a little bit different. Um, again, the information that you get there is more about the individual's professional career. You also get information from university pages as we saw. So if you want to find out more about alumni, people who attended a particular university and where they're at, you get that type of information through LinkedIn. I also find this a wonderful place to find associations. Um, so if you want to find, let's say for us, professional associations, you notice that uh, SLA has different groups that are available, but there's also associations related to particular industries, so like uh, food, healthcare, they're all available there. And you can also participate within these groups. So you have open groups which don't require anybody to veto your participation, and then you have other ones where you just go through a review, and usually, um, you know, they review your, your, um, your profile, and they usually let you in. No questions asked, and it's wonderful to participate in these groups. Uh, one of the best things about LinkedIn is that their advanced search capabilities. So if you wanted to use um, some of their past company searching, uh, you can actually do that. If you want additional search capabilities, though, you have to pay for them. So it's not everything is free. There are some, um, I would call filters that you do have to pay for and that you only get with a premium account. And unfortunately, one of the things that I find that's too bad now is that LinkedIn no longer gives you insights uh, information. There's no more information concerning the statistics of who's coming to your company, who's leaving, where are they coming from, where are they going to. So that type of information is no longer, no longer freely available through the company pages. So uh, we do lose a little bit of information, but in that regard, uh, at least they've added in some other features that I think make up for what we lost. Okay, so we looked a little bit at uh, the companies. We looked at competitive intelligence and what we can gather through LinkedIn and what we can gather through Facebook. Now I just want to turn my attention to the analysis aspect. And what I wanted to do here was really focus on ways where we can look at ways where we can gather information about what's trending right now at the moment. So uh, a couple of free sites that I wanted to mention to you. A social mention is one that I use quite often. And Social mention is basically a, it's a real-time search engine which gives you results up to the last 30 days. And what it will do is it will tell you how popular a particular search is. Is it trending? What kind of buzz is it generating? What, what is the sentiment? What kind of comments do we have? Is it mostly positive, mostly negative? The strength, the reach, all that type of metrics are available through social mention. Um, Topsy is a very interesting one. It's more towards Twitter. So if you're looking for a tweet going back to the inception of the company in 2006, Topsy is the place to go. You just type in what you're looking for, a particular hashtag. You can search for it. And it claims to have all tweets since 2006. So Topsy, um, I'm very impressed with what they have to offer. 
and meltwater ice rocket is something I just discovered while I was uh, getting ready for this presentation. Again, the idea here is that it's searching across the different platforms. Again, it also includes blogs like Tumblr, World, uh, WordPress, as well as Twitter posts, and so you get a chance to see what's trending at the moment. There's some paid sites. We'll take a look at that a little bit later on. So Rival IQ is the one that I have a, uh, that I'll be demoing for you. But there's other ones that are available, like Simply Measured, Crimson, Hexagon, uh, Digimind. Um, how much you pay for them depends on how you plan to use it. Uh, depends also on the company. Some companies have uh, subscriptions. Uh, other companies they charge you on a monthly. Other companies charge you on an annual basis. So depending on your needs, you may have to visit a few of these sites. But Rival IQ and Simply Measured are two that I'm familiar with that I'm concluding here uh, in name, and I'll be giving you an example of how, what kind of information and metrics you can find there. So let's focus on the free stuff first. So what I decided to do was I decided to go to social mention. I just typed in Coca-Cola and basically what it does, it gives me all mentions of Coca-Cola in the last 30 days. So anytime is really the last 30 days. And you get a chance to see some of the responses are within 36 seconds, 47 seconds. You'll notice on the left hand side you have some metrics available such as strength, sentiment, passion and reach. So sentiment, um, we don't know exactly how to determine what a sentiment is, but basically what they're telling you is for every four positive sentiments, there's one negative one. So if you want to see the actual breakdown, if you just look at the bottom, you'll notice that you have the sentiment positive 80, neutral 160, negative 121. So if you want to filter the results, you can look at only the negative sentiments. You can do that using social mention. You'll get only the negative comments, um, negative posts. You also have additional information such as strengths, so how likely are people talking about this particular keyword search. You have the passion, now how, how often it's being retweeted or favorited by other people, and its reach, which is really the, the range of influence that this uh, particular uh, search has. So you have a lot of other information. You also have information such as top keywords, top users on social mentions. If you want to filter, see what other people are saying about you or what somebody specifically is saying about your uh, keyword search or your brand, you can target on that and you get information specifically about it. So again, this is just social mention. It's completely free online. Um, it's not perfect. The, it does have an alert function which unfortunately does not work and it also allows you to export data but that doesn't work as well. So it's basically just a search page right now and with very basic metrics available on the left hand side. So this is why I think it's really important if you're interested in competitive intelligence to also have an account with uh, one of the paid subscription services. Uh, so this is an example of Rival IQ. And Rival IQ gives you a little bit more information specifically about how companies are being viewed on social media. So in this case, the social audience, which is the first box, indicates where you have the most followers. So in this case, if I was Coca-Cola, most of my followers are on Facebook. I have very few, I have less followers on LinkedIn, and then I also have some followers on Twitter, but Google Plus, YouTube, and Instagram have virtually no presence. It's probably because the company doesn't have a presence there. So how do I, how do I stand? I compare myself to four other companies, including PepsiCo, Red Bull, and Nestle, and I stand third and fourth if I was looking at this particular company and to see where where my positioning is. Social activity is reflects where the companies are posting and how often they're posting. So if I was following Coca-Cola, I noticed that they're posting mostly on Twitter, which was a surprise, but it's maybe that's why they have such low usage, um, such low interactions on Facebook because they tend to use Twitter a lot more. And social engagement uh, refers to the customer response to the company's social posts, so retweets, likes, and comments, and things like that. So again, uh, Coca-Cola, it's okay, but could do better, on, especially on Facebook. They rank two out of four. And you notice at the bottom of each uh, table, it says additional social media metrics. If I click on additional social engagement metrics, for example, here I get additional information and what I can do is I can take all this information, I can package it in a report and I can also set up an alert and anything, anytime one of my competitors has something that happens, they're getting a post that's very popular, I will be sent an email directly and I can see what that post is. So it could be one of my posts, it could be a post of a competitor, immediately I'll have that information and I could, I could basically uh, respond to it if I wanted to. So. 
yeah, this is the advantages of using advanced metrics. It gives you a very simple platform that you can see quickly how your company is progressing and you get a chance to see how, how people are interacting with your page. Okay. So I noticed the time is 1.45, so we're right on schedule. So I just wanted to conclude this presentation by saying a couple of things. So I hope I proved that social media, it is being used for marketing, but we can also use it beyond marketing. And I find that a lot of companies are moving to those tools. They're discovering how they can use social media now for other purposes, such as innovation. I think operations is an area that's going to grow in the future. And uh, talent recruitment and fundraising is always going to be part of social media as well. So if you're looking for companies, you want to find out what, how, what kind of campaigns there are, it's wonderful to use Facebook, but we can also find a little bit more information about operations and uh, as well as innovations. Uh, social media tools do not replace traditional business information sources. You still need your traditional directories. You still need your other sources because I think one study that I read, um, social media is important to companies. However, articles, reports are more important. I think articles really was at 71% importance. So you still need your traditional sources. Um, but social media is basically another tool you can add to your arsenal. Uh, something that I teach my students and I also think it's very important to mention is you always want to evaluate your sources. Uh, just because somebody says so on LinkedIn or on Facebook doesn't make it true. Just because it's trending on Twitter doesn't make it true. We often have to check our sources. And I think as librarians we're really good at that. But just wanted to mention that it's very important for us to evaluate our sources and not to take anything um, at face value. Last but not least, it's also important to take advantage of social media content so, uh, providers. So if you want to get an analysis done, I think a site like Rival IQ is a fantastic source. If you just want to get a sense of what kind of buzz your product or your search is generating, social mention is completely free and it gives you an idea of how people view your particular brand or your product or how it's being viewed by the community as a whole. So that's my presentation. I would be happy to take any of your questions. I think we have about 13 minutes. So um, yeah. if you want to connect with me, you have my information. If you have any questions that you want to send to me privately, please do not hesitate. But I'll also take a few questions now. OK, thanks so much, Rajiv. Um, we've had lots of questions come in, many of which um, they came in, and then you sort of answered them throughout the presentation. But um, <laughs> so I will get to the ones that haven't been answered. Um, that being said, though, you know, you, you cautioned everyone to um, essentially triangulate their sources and make sure that they're not just using Facebook or, or LinkedIn or, or Twitter or what have you as your source. I would also um, remind people it's, you know, it's so easy for us to get caught up in the shiny and new that is social media and to, to, to get sucked into the Facebook suck or the LinkedIn time suck or whatever it is. But remember to always tie this stuff back to your key intelligence topics and you know, data for the sake of data or fun statistics for the sake of statistics or how many likes a competitor has, um, you always want to try to tie that back into how this is going to affect your company's strategy or how it could potentially affect your company's marketing or whatever it is you're, you're researching. Um, with that, I will start with some of the questions. So um, you showed a bunch of LinkedIn pages early on and the, there were some questions around whether or not those were public pages, specifically around um, the Phillips special interest pages, were those open or were you invited to those groups? Okay, good question. So it's an interest group and basically the way it's set up on Phillips is that you just ha you're invited to them, but they did have some open pages as well. So depending on the pages you're looking at, the food and beverage was also one that you're invited to. And it's actually a good question because one of the things I noticed when I was looking at the groups, I noticed that some of the open groups tended to have a lot of spam in them as well. So it showed that they had a lot of activity, but it's because there was a lot of spam also filtering in into some of the open groups. So one of the things I'm looking at and I'm starting to see a little bit more, maybe I'm wrong, but one well, of the sense that I'm getting is that we're starting to see a lot more groups starting to have a moderator where somebody vetoes who gets into a group and who doesn't. Just to make sure that the conversation remains relevant and also something the conversation remains um, on, on task and the house rules are respected within each group. Right. So that leads to one of the questions that's been asked in a variety of different ways by a variety of different people, which is, um, in regard to searching, whether or not you should search anonymously, how you can search anonymously, and or if you should create a persona for your company so that when you're doing searches in Facebook or LinkedIn or being asked to be a part of these groups, um, whether or not 
you should do it as a part of your company, you should do it as an individual, and, and how you go about doing those things. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, that's a good question. Um, personally, the way I do it is I use my own name because I want to be honest with the people that I'm using and I always tell them. So for example, when I, I, I forget which group I was joining, I sent out a request first uh, to the person, to the moderator, and I told them this is the reason why I would like to join your group. And then I, I went ahead and I waited and they had a few questions, but then they let me into the group. Um, personally, I feel it's very important to be transparent. Um, I go with my name. I don't ever go with Concordia University, but then again, if you're a company, if you have your own company, um, you still want to identify yourself and the reason why I feel that it's important is because people f like to talk to other people. Um, that's the sense I usually get when I use um, when I use social media is try to be as open as you can and if people don't want to let you in then there's no point of forcing it but it is public information and if certain groups are closed and they don't let you in well you move on to plan B that's all. If, uh, if anyone out there in the ether has a good example of somebody from Pepsi trying to join a Coca-Cola discussion group I'd love to hear about it. Um, <laughs> I know certainly in, in the law firm community, we, we're all pretty open to some extent, but I don't know how it is in the consumer goods industry, so that would be interesting. Mm -hmm. um, another question for you was around um, other regional social media sites that we know that LinkedIn and Facebook are popular in the U.S., but what about, do you know of any other sites elsewhere um, that are popular in local languages or, or regional spaces? Sure. Um, there's a couple that I'm familiar with just because I, I work also in something called Crossing. It's X-I-N-G. It's very similar to, to LinkedIn and it's quite popular when we go to Germany and you'll see a lot of Germans or a lot of Austrians. So if you're looking for a company that's based in that part of the world, you may want to try going into something like Crossing. Um, in terms of French, Fiatio is also very popular. It's a French very similar again to LinkedIn. You can go into that site, create a profile, and if a lot of people from France, I'm not sure about Quebec, but there's, there tends to be a lot of people from France that are there. There are also other sites that are uh, coming up. Unfortunately, I can't think of all of them right now, but those are the two that come to my mind, and uh, Crossing is one that I find is very interesting, and I have a profile there, and I use it, not extensively as I use LinkedIn, but I find it is quite helpful for looking for information in Europe. Very helpful, thank you. Um, do Social Mention and Topsy have free limited use versions or are they only the fee subscription based? Uh, social Mention is completely free. Okay. So if you go to the website, Social Mention, um, you can see it, it looks very Google-esque. So you go to that page and what will happen is it will ask you to put in your term that you're looking for. It will show you what terms are currently trending in social media. And what it does, social mention, it actually um, covers about 80 different social media platforms. So it's not just Facebook and LinkedIn, but it also tends to have other areas as well. So um, it also has Reddit, it also has news aggregators. So you're not just looking at social media, you're also looking at a wider range of sources as well. Probably not as, as wide as you would find in Google, but a very typical search would be real-time searching, which you can find right away. And social media is very is free. Um, if you look at something like Rival IQ, there is a cost, but Rival IQ also has a trial, I think, of two weeks that you can use it for for free. And the reason why I like Rival IQ is because they send you an email anytime something happens within your landscape. So any type of changes, your competitor introduces a new product, you get an email right away, and that's something you just don't get with the free sources like Social Mention. Great, thank you. Um, so we've looked at examples like Red Cross, Coca Cola, uh, KLM. Do you think? that small businesses as well could could benefit from this kind of social media mining? You mean in, in the context of actually searching for competitors? Yeah, or just, in, I mean, we've only looked at really big examples, so there was a mm -hmm. question as to whether or not this sort of social media mining would work in support of small company CI. Yes, I believe so, because again, you tend to see a lot of small companies. I mean, when I I haven't looked at small companies per se. I have studied micro businesses, and you do tend to see micro businesses a lot more on Facebook, as the, the the data showed. But also in my own research, I found that micro companies who don't have a lot of time to spend on social media will usually pick one or the other. 
and in most cases it would be Facebook. And when you go into Facebook, you can actually see uh, they'll probably just have a very simple site. And again, like let's say somebody sets up a baker, somebody sets up a particular manufacturer, maybe not manufacturing, but something very specific or very small that's focused on retail, uh, you usually find information about it in Facebook first because that's an easy way for them to reach out and to build a clientele there. So if you were to use, if you were to look for a small company, what kind of mining information you could find, I would say Facebook would be a great place to start and you usually can find some information about a company there. What kind of followers? We don't know yet. It may be very small in terms of followings, but if the company has been around for a while, then they will have a very dedicated group and from that page you will still be able to mind what kind of activities that they're engaged in. Great. Um, in Rival IQ, can you, um, can you drill through the metrics reporting to identify the origins of a post or a trend? Uh, good question. You know what? I I didn't I I haven't done that recently. Um, okay. I think you can identify. Like when I get an email, I definitely get I I get the post itself, so I get a chance to see. But I don't know if you can find out who was the first tweeter or who. That is something I would have to probably check. Okay. Um, so the person who asked that, you can just get in touch with Rajiv. Um, yeah, I'll be happy to look into that and to provide you with an answer. And last question, I'll give you a minute before we wrap up here. Um, <laughs> could you provide a quick overview of Pinterest? Of Pinterest? Yeah. Sure. Well, Pinterest is a visual social media platform, and um, I think it's the one that's growing very quickly now because it does have that appeal. You tend to have a lot of companies that are involved in retail using Pinterest, um, a lot of you know, uh, bakeries, products, consumables. I think you're seeing a lot of interest, when, especially when it comes to retail, when it comes to Pinterest. Uh, personally, I don't have a page in Pinterest. I don't use it that often. And the reason, one of the things that has me worried about Pinterest sometimes is really the, the copyright. Can I use a particular image? Do I have the rights to do so? Do I have time to take a picture myself and to put things up? And also, how does it fit into the, uh, the areas that I, I research? So that's why I don't really cover Pinterest too much. But it is a fascinating area, and I see a lot of growth in that, especially when I, when I read the reports. Um, a good place to find out how it's growing, I believe it's the Pew Research Center, which has a social media update for 2014. You get a chance to see how people are using it and what the demographics are of the people who are using Pinterest. And just looking at it very quickly, it's mostly women. 42% uh, of Pinterest users are women. They tend to focus between the ages of 18 to 29. And um, yeah, a lot of a lot of breakdown. And again, this is available through the Pew Research Center Social Media Update 2014, where they talk a lot about Pinterest and who is actually using it. That's great. Thanks, Rajiv. Um, I think we'll we'll end there. And thank you for your time and your insights on social media. Certainly, a lot to think about. I know I I'm going to take away a few tips and tricks um, in terms of certainly I like your improvements, your your suggestions for improvements, and um, question marks around, or sorry, check marks around the official pages for companies in Facebook. I think that was both um, mm -hmm. some good tips there. Um, this session will be recorded for anybody who missed it, so just look for that on the CID website uh, sometime in the next few days, and we will send out a link as well. Um, and thank you again to Aurora WDC, and as well, please look for our next webinar on April the 29th at 11 p.m. Eastern. Uh, our host will be uh, Jesper Martelli from Commentelli, and he'll be talking about creating competitive intelligence taxonomies to visualize your business environment. So a very exciting topic then as well. And again, that's April the 29th at 11 a.m. Thank you all very much for your time, and uh, feel free to reach out to Rajiv if you have any more questions. Thanks very much. Have a great afternoon. Thank you.